Scale Modelers, welcome to a kit review from the Mile High Scale Modeler channel. This is the Tamiya Castrol Toyota Tom Supra GT in 124th scale. Let's have a look at the box art for the small kit. We will then move to opening the box, showing the contents of the box, and then take a deep dive into each individual sprue. This kit review along with all others I produce are to be informative to the viewer, like you, to help you decide if the current prices you are seeing for this kit are worth it. Let's go through the box quickly and then deep dive into the contents. For products that I use to suit my building needs along with my airbrush setup, all this information and links can be found in the description below of this video. If you would like to be notified of further content I produce, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't and hit that notification bell. Being a subscriber is one of the great things YouTube allows viewers like you to do for free. Let's start our deep dive with the instruction manual. The front of the instruction manual talks about the 1993 inaugural Japanese GT Championship and about Taichi Oiwa Motorsports Racing History aka Tom's up to that point. Step 1, the assembly of the brakes, front suspension, and bottom of the engine take place. Step 3, we install the front undercard along with the radiator and some mesh on the instructions. Step 5, the attachment of the rear suspension to the body is made along with the installation of the rear drivetrain. Step 8, the installation of some interior items take place, including the middle console along with some air hoses for the side windows. Step 10, the assembly and installation of the roll cage along with dashboard and instruments are completed. Step 11, the door cards are installed. Step 12, parts of the body start to get some attention with installations such as the front and wide body fenders and louvers. Step 13, the interior glass along with some of the exterior glass are installed. Step 15, the remaining body parts are installed including the GT wing, rear window glass, front headlights, taillights, and rear diffuser. Backside the instruction manual to me identifies all the decals and placement of these decals. Moving on to the remaining stuff in this kit, we start with the dry transfer decals. The decal sheet is a good size for this kit. The decal sheet is tedious to install with individual decals for each hood louver that have to be aligned just right. There are also many contingency sponsors, carbon fiber for the seat, and a five point harness as a decal. Here's the mesh the instruction manual identified that goes in front of the radiator. These are the poly caps to help install the wheel to the chassis. The tires are soft. I always do a squish test to identify how soft or hard they are. These slicks have a nice rubber color to them. The rear tires are a bit wider compared to the fronts. Very nice tires overall. The first sprue to show is the clear glass sprue. This sprue has the front glass, rear glass, front headlight lenses, rear tail light lenses, both for exterior and interior as you can see. This sprue has many parts on it. We can see the rear drivetrain, Sparco seat, bottom of the engine, and the door cards. 
The brake rotors are a bit weak for me with this being a GT car, so I will use a drill bit and add some slotted holes to make this car look the part. The dashboard is well detailed and I like all the buttons that I can paint different colors for the racing effect. Flipping over the sprue we can see all the details that are missed on our first glance. If you are enjoying this video, please hit that like button and comment below if you have built this kit and any issues you had along the way. On this sprue, the cage is shown along with the front wide body kit, exhaust, GT wing, the front undercard, and some additional parts. These are the wheels. What can I say except they are chrome plated that are nice however to match the box art or the real car I would dechrome these and paint them aluminum and then mask off the remaining for the white color. For the body, I enjoy that it is more of a one piece compared to other GT and GT3 cars made by Tamiya. You don't have to glue the rear or front body kit to the car. The body is mean looking for the appearance and who knows I may just want to build this kit and make it into a street worthy daily driver that will be badass. There is very minimal mold lines to deal with on this body and it looks to make it a quick turnaround in the paint booth. For anyone who would be building this for a contest just make sure to remove the copyright under the headliner. No sink marks or anything else that needs to be taken care of for this interior. Tamiya never falls short of impressing with their craftsmanship for a model kit. <laughs>